Hello guys, welcome back to another article. This is from Good Day PA or abc27.com titled Kindly Canines Therapy Dogs. Um, this was published yesterday and let's see what they have to say about their own therapy dogs. Oh, okay, good. Okay, we can get going. They are called Kindly Canines, dogs specifically trained to provide affectionate therapeutic care and they're really special. Two of the dogs are here today along with their handlers, Brian Bowers and Chantel Wagner. These dogs, you do a lot. First things first, tell us who we have here with us today. Um, I'm Chantel, of course, and this is uh, Taz. He's a mini golden doodle and he's about three years old. Um, and he's about 15 pounds. Also, I'm going to interject here. She has a mini golden doodle. Genetics is very difficult with mixes. Um, I have known people who thought they were getting a mini golden doodle and the dog ended up growing to be the size of a normal golden. Um, so it's not guaranteed. Some will come out smaller, some will come out bigger, some will come out very not hypoallergenic, some will come out maybe, you know, more leaning towards the hypoallergenic side. Just fun facts. Huh, so it's nice 15 handle. pounds. Now, on the flip side, <laughs> who do we have over here? Uh, I'm Brian, and this is Quest. Quest weighed in a 111 pounds, wow. so he's slightly bigger. I'm surprised that's all he weighs. That is one big dog. <laughs> Can you summarize the work of Kindly Canines? Well, our work is, is very simple. We go in uh, to, to various places, spreading joy and comfort using the dogs. It's all about the dogs. Just... He's so cute. I love this man. He's like, we. what was it? He says, we go to different places to spread joy and kindness or something. Kindly. Hold on. To, to various places, spreading joy and comfort. You... Spreading joy and comfort. Listen, I love this man already. <laughs> the dog. It's all about the dogs. And we're just at the other end of the leash. Where do you take? We're just at the other end of the leash. We're just here observing everything. We're just here. <laughs> We're the ones that are carting them around. This... <laughs> them and, and how are they used? Um, we visit hospital, hospitals, nursing home. Um, we visit the VA hospital in Martinsburg. Um, schools, libraries around our community. Um, we visit universities for distressing. Um, Oh yeah, that's something that was, my university hosted um, some therapy dogs with like puppy therapy or whatever they called it. I never attended. I had too much on my plate and too much anxiety and depression and PTSD going on. Um, but I've heard great things about it. <laughs> I wish I participated. Maybe it would have helped me with those symptoms. So that's uh these dogs like where do they come from how are they trained how old are they because they're your personal dogs yes okay explain how the whole thing works they are our personal dogs i also like um this lady this lady here she was talking she was talking to her do I think. they come from how okay yeah. um, we visit universities for distress so she gives her a little blip um, so I it's the awkward moment right there. Like, she's like, we go to university, de-stressing. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what we do. Yeah, we're just here on the other side of the leash, like this guy said. <laughs> so it's like, there's a little moment of awkward pause, and the interviewer is like, trying to pull it out of her. She's like, trying to pull some teeth out. She's like, okay, so, and, and what else? Can you tell us more? What about the training? Give me all the things. I'm going to tell you these things. Maybe it'll trigger some more conversation. Let's talk. Let's go. Uh, these dogs, like, where do they come from? How are they trained? How but, old are they? Honestly, like, I'm not making fun of anybody because when you're on TV, I've never been on TV before, right? It's stressful. You're on a freaking stage in front of an audience and it's awkward, right? 
So it's more endearing to me to watch people go and talk about their passion and their dogs on stage for the first time. Um, it's more endearing, like, cause I, I understand that mindset and where is that, where that comes from. Um, anybody who's even tried getting on stage for theater knows that feeling, right? This was way back in high school. I'm not an expert by any means, but I, I understand the feeling and the sentiment. Are they, because they're your personal dogs. Yes. Okay, explain how the whole thing works. They are our personal dogs. Uh, we are affiliated with Alliance Therapy Dogs. So uh, we go through observation training. It's very important that the dogs are calm and friendly. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, not only with people. I'm sorry, just look at this man's face. He's like a kid in a candy store. Like, look at his face. Honestly, you can tell he's just delighted to be here. He's just, he's giddy as all get out. He's just, he's happy. This is, this is his retirement's calling, right? It's just, it's so sweet. Calm and friendly. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, not only with people, but with, uh, with the other dogs. So we do get around a lot of places. They got to be calm around medical equipment. And, and various uh, yeah, you can't knock over medical they equipment. could get exposed to. So it's all about the dogs and the, the temperament. Is it something where if somebody has a dog or that they think, hey, maybe this dog has the right temperament for something like this? Or is it that you get a dog and think, I'm going to train the dog to do this? Like, you know what I mean? Basically, it's the right temperament. Okay. Um, the doodle. actually have other dogs at home, and one was um, I had my dreams of doing agility with them. But she was such a good therapy dog that uh, I just said, oh, forget the agility, which kind of helped me. Um, and then, um, yeah, she just had the right temperament and loves to be petted and loves Aww. people. And I, I love that they do actually bring up temperament in this news piece because it does matter. There are certain dogs that are happier in certain roles, and we want to make sure that the dog is happy, right? Just because you have a dog that's a herding breed doesn't mean the dog wants to herd or is any good at herding. Maybe it'd be happy as a therapy dog, right? Um, and, and on the converse side, if you have a dog that's really happy and ready for agility, like this woman said she tried to get her golden doodle to do agility, Dog wasn't picking up on it. Dog wasn't having a good time. It wasn't easy. It wasn't fun. So they did, they switched gears. They said, okay, you're telling me they, they have a great relationship. They can communicate clearly to each other. And you can say, oh, well, you're telling me that this is not the best fit for you. So let's try something else. Would you like to do this? Would you like to try therapy work? So it is fantastic to see these kinds of relationships being portrayed on public television in this news piece. So um, already sounds like a great handler. Yes, agility is a fun, addictive, speedy sport um, when you have the right dog and um, the right dedication to it. But again, it depends on temperament. It depends what your dog is truly happy doing other dogs and when we were looking through the pictures you had sent some and i noticed something really sweet and it was dogs with with children they're like reading together how how is that orchestrated um that has um it's a what we call a reads program and we go into schools of course and libraries and we start in that session around september when the school starts and us as a handler we notice that when they read to the dogs that they have more confidence in their mm -hmm. reading. Um, they're not worried about being laughed at because they can't pronounce a word. Or sometimes if they can't read, we sometimes ask them just to tell us a story with the pictures. And it just has opened up um, their reading level. By the end of the school year in May, um, we see such a difference between their, how they can read better out loud um, because of reading to the dogs. Well, let's put the contact information up for Kindly Canines. Viewers may actually have a dog, and, and maybe they wouldn't be part of this. So how do they reach out and, and kind of open that conversation? Well, you have our, Call our contact say, hey. information up there. I'm going to leave some pamphlets here forward. at the radio oh, station. I try to apply. Uh, the TV station, I should say. And uh, honestly, we're looking for everybody we can get that thinks they have a dog that can 
spread joy to others mm -hmm. and are kind. That's why we're kindly canine. Perfect. That's what we're looking for. And that we'd love wonderful. to have you. Well, we appreciate you visiting and these guys visiting us. I'm surprised. This is actually in Pennsylvania. I don't know. What was the area code? Was it 717? Is that West PA? I don't even. Yeah, it's a 717 number. Okay. I don't know where they're based out of. Um, but yeah, honestly, program picked great ambassadors. <laughs> the dog's coming over to say hello. <laughs> He's like, I want to do my job. Um, it just, it looks great. If you're interested in therapy work, go to apply. Figure it out. See if see if it works. Or if you want to put some, um, I also will do, I can put you in touch with people who do therapy dog assessments. If you're looking to see if your dog has the right temperament. And of course, if you're looking for some basic training, I can help you with that too. If you guys are interested in learning more about my training programs, you can follow me on my social media. I am everywhere at Caitlin's Animals, including Instagram, TikTok, and on Facebook, Caitlin's Animal Training. Thank you guys so much for joining. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.